The Legion glasses are my very first time dealing with these AR glasses. But what are AR glasses? Well, it's simple really. You put them on and then they sort of project a screen in your face. So Lenovo sent these over and they're not seeing this video before I release it. And of course, no money has exchanged hands. And I will have to send this back eventually. Opening this box up reveals a glasses case and a manual, but honestly you don't really need the manual because the device itself is very easy to use. It's very simple to use. So the glasses case is a lot bigger than your standard glasses case, and I mean the glasses themselves are a little bigger. But anyways, it's a nice protective case, hard shell on the outside, foam on the inside. You know the deal. And the glasses themselves. Oh, the glasses themselves. You know, I've never used one of these before. I've never used an AR glasses before, and it's a lot thicker than I was expecting, I'm not gonna lie. But, I mean, it comes with the territory. There's actually technology in here, and it's not just glasses. Also attached is this USB Type-C cable that's permanently attached as well. I do think that's an unfortunate choice because if the cable ever breaks, then you're basically screwed. The other major glasses companies like Xreal or Vidsure make sure that their cables are detachable in case you ever have to replace them. So if Lenovo ever makes Legion glasses too, then that should be the first thing they improve on. So the plastic feature in these glasses feel a lot more like soft plastic than say your average plastic on like your sunglasses. But do these glasses fit? Well, I think they fit most people. I can't imagine your head being too big or too small for these glasses. Your average regular sized adult could put these on. And yes, using it is pretty simple. All you have to do is put the glasses on and plug the USB Type-C cable into whatever device you want. So while these glasses are typically advertised with the Legion Go, you can actually use them on just about any device that has DisplayPort out via USB-C. You know, kind of like your Legion Go, but also your Steam Deck, your ROG Ally, heck, even Android. A note on Android though, for whatever reason, it doesn't like working with my Motorola Razr Plus. Which is odd because Motorola is also owned by Lenovo. You know, you would think that these would work together, but for whatever reason it doesn't. I don't know why. My Motorola Razr Plus only sees it as a device to be charged and ultimately just doesn't see it as a display. Like, Lenovo's manual specifically mentions this working with Motorola phones, but also third party phones like Samsung phones. Yeah, it doesn't work on mine for whatever reason, but I'll have to get another one of these devices from another brand to see if it works with my phone. But before that, if you liked this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech lowlife really lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. So now it's time to talk about actually using the device on the devices that I have that work with it. First and foremost, the Legion Go, because these are supposed to go with the Legion Go, right? Well, you plug it in and it just works. You plug it in, you put your eyes in your glasses, and then you can just play games. So the glasses boast a micro OLED display, which looks great, but it's also limited to 60 hertz, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because most devices are limited to 60 hertz, but we do live in an era where most of our PC handhelds can go higher than 60 hertz now. Heck, even the Steam Deck OLED goes up to 90 hertz but the Legion Go itself goes up to 144Hz. There's also the resolution though. The resolution is 1080p, whereas the Legion Go can go up to 1440p. Actually, technically a little higher because it's 16 by 10. It is an interesting dichotomy to have a lower resolution, lower refresh rate device, but with better picture quality as your, you know, glasses. That said, it does work with Windows handhelds like the Legion Go, and by default, Windows will want to mirror devices. Personal recommendation though, I would have the Legion Go screen turn off whenever you plug the glasses in, as to not waste extra battery. One more special note about the Legion Go is that, if you remember correctly, you can actually detach the controllers from the Legion Go itself and just play it kind of like Joy-Cons. You can lay down Joy-Cons in your hand and the Legion Go somewhere else, and then just relax and play. It's honestly one of the more unique ways to play video games. I've seen some people do this in YouTube videos and I thought it was kind of ridiculous, but actually doing it myself, it's actually super cool. It almost makes me believe that this is the future. And of course, with the Steam Deck, when you plug it into the Steam Deck, the Steam Deck screen goes black and you can play games on your glasses. And now it's time to talk about the actual picture quality when you use it. Actually recording this product in action is quite difficult, and I had a difficult time getting a good angle on this. So yes, a lot of the b-roll is going to be visualization, and honestly it kind of looks something like this. 
With the magic of video editing, I put up a fairly accurate representation of what it kind of looks like, to my eyes at least. So the display manifests as a sort of box that's just floating, and when you move your head around, the box stays centered to your eyes as well. And for the most part, it works about how you'd expect it to work. But I do have some concerns about how blurry it gets around the edges of the display. It's not super blurry, and I can make out the words if I, you know, take my time to actually read them, but at a glance, it is blurry and it can detract from the gameplay experience, especially if you play with games with HUD elements in the corners of the display. That said, the center of the screen is not blurry, and of course that's where you'll be spending most of your time looking. So there are some other considerations to consider, especially if you wear glasses. When you buy these brand new, Lenovo gives you a prescription frame in which you would stick your own prescription lenses in, and you would just play that way. It's not really something I can demonstrate because I have 2020 vision, which I guess is weird because I play a lot of video games, but yeah. Now as for physical comfort, I mean, some people say they have migraines with these sorts of devices, I don't, but that really depends. The only sort of discomfort I have is that sometimes my temple gets sore after wearing these for a while. This greatly depends on how big your head is, how big your skull is, and I guess your brain as well. And some will ask whether or not you can use this outside, and the answer is yes, you can use it outside, and yes, it is usable outside if you increase the brightness. But of course, the actual shades portion is transparent, so you'll see stuff behind your game. I do know that some of the other competitors have a total blackout mode, and I wish Lenovo had a feature like that here too. All in all, it's a very exciting category of products. I've never used these sorts of glasses before, and now that I have, I want more. So now this is the part where we talk about price. At MSRP, the glasses are $330, but as of the making of this video, they're currently on sale for $299. I think for what it's worth, they do work as advertised. You plug them in and then you play games on them or watch movies or whatever, and it does work. And the OLED looks pretty good too. But one of the big OLED advantages, you know, the insane contrast ratio, the true blacks, you're not going to see true blacks because these are partially see-through. Now, if you like covered the sunglasses portion with like a black piece of paper, you'll see true black. But an option for total blackout would have been preferable. And as for the gaming experience, I mean, the gaming experience works. It looks great except for one glaring issue. The blurriness around the edges and corners. Not to mention, this is supposed to be paired with a device that can go up to 144Hz, whereas these are limited to 60Hz by themselves. I might not have any frame of reference in regards to these AR glasses, but I feel like Lenovo's missing features. I do hope that Lenovo revises these and makes the glasses too with more features and less blurriness around the edges. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.